Hi everybody, Keith here. Uh, I've been doing work with uh, Bois de Drave, the, the company that's doing the logging operation on Tea Lake. And I started with them before COVID and I've been going out with them over the past few years and had the opportunity to go down with them a few times underwater and set up some cameras and basically was following their operation. But their operation has kind of changed in the last, well, really a lot in the last year. There's universities that have gotten involved and they're looking at the condition of Tea Lake itself. Um, unfortunately, it, Tea Lake may look like a beautiful lake when you drive past, you know, when you're going past the Commonwealth Mill. But when you look at the, uh, the bottom of the lake, it's unfortunately, it's a dead lake. Eh, there's no other way to describe it. And this episode, the last two episodes have been dealing with the condition of the lake and I've been leaving footage in deliberately just to show the silt, uh, the accumulation down on the bottom. Uh, I've been leaving that, that footage in knowing that it doesn't look the greatest, but it's calling attention to people because they're asking about the condition of that lake and they want to see what's going on. And in this episode, you're going to get to see the awful truth. It's not very nice down there. Now, I met with uh, Mayor Norman Young. We met at his office at the Tea Lake, uh, Tea Lake Municipal Office, and he expressed his concerns on the lake and different projects that are going on in the area. Now, my main concern is I'm an outdoors person and I love being outside and I love being on the water. And it, I know that an area like that is going to be a problem. I mean, they've been operating a mill there for how long? 100 years or more? And it's not a place that you're... It's not a place that you're going to see a clean bottom. Just for the amount of logs that they're pulling out of there, the amount of bark that's on the bottom, you'll see spots where like methane is bubbling through the rotting bark that's on the bottom. Garbage is piled up. Um, Stefan and Julie and Pierre have done surveys of the area and they've mapped out areas and talking about how garbage and bark accumulations in certain areas that is you know in some areas two three hundred meters wide and half a kilometer long and you know 15 to 30 feet deep it, it's just it's it's a tragedy to see what's going on down there i know the lumber companies had carte blanche and they could do whatever they wanted 75 years ago 100 years ago but unfortunately the, we're the ones that have to be stuck here taking care of this today so like I was saying, Norm expressed his concerns about the projects that are going on and about the condition of the lake itself, being that Tea Lake is in the municipality of Kippewa, and as the mayor, he was voicing his concerns, and I was sympathetic to him just because I've been down there and I saw the condition of what Tea Lake looks like. So I'm going to let you listen to what, what sorry, I'm going to let you listen to what Mayor Norman Young had to say about about the uh, the condition of the lake and different projects that are going on in the area. And afterwards, you're going to get to watch uh, Keith Outdoors episode number 24. And that episode is dealing with nothing but the condition of the lake bottom. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. I, it's not something that I want to show people, but it's something that I think people really should see. And I appreciate your input after this. It's uh, Collectively, we're the ones that can stop this. We can change we can change the condition of these lakes. We can do things. I mean, when you look at the bottom of that lake and you don't see a single rock, then you know there isn't a pickerel habitat there anymore. When you swim 150 meters across an area and you don't see a single weed, you know that lake is in trouble. Check it out. Check out Norm's piece. And thank you very much for joining me. I hope you appreciate it. Take care. Bye now. Okay, I just want to welcome uh, Keith here and Canal Kimirata at the Miskaman Kipua. This is a first inter interview that I've participated in to share my concerns and thoughts, not my concerns and thoughts, but the concerns and thoughts of the, the council and mayor of Kipua and the citizens of Kipua. And we're talking about the, the uh, hydro development project that the calling the run of the river project through the municipality of Kippewa and through uh, Lake Kippewa, where it begins, of course, up in Lanyell. Uh, this project is, they've been talking to us about this project since 2012. Back then it was Energex, Wolf Lake, and 
Kibowak and they propose to sign a memorandum of understanding with the municipality of uh, Tamiskaming, uh, Kipua, Bayarn, and Lanyel. And they propose to give us approximately $120,000 a year to sign a memorandum of understanding to move forward with this project. All the other communities agreed to sign, and I believe they, they did. But the municipality of Kipua, when I read the M MOU that they wanted to s for us to sign, it stated that uh, uh, we would have to support this project no matter what. And that really concerned me and the councillors here. So we contacted our legal counsel to ask them their advice on this, and they said, under no circumstances should you, should you sign any memorandum of understanding such as that where you have no say when it comes to the environment, that you just must accept the project as it's proposed to you. That was not acceptable to us here in the municipality of Kipo. So over the years, that's since 2012, we had numerous meetings with the promoters. That was Kipoek, Wolf Lake, and the MRC. And uh, Matt, uh, Energex was the company at the time too, so we had numerous meetings with them and we were involved, we expressed our concerns and, and uh, every time when we expressed our concerns, I could sense a little pushback saying, well, well you know, when we've always stated, we're not opposed to the project that you're trying to, 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 to uh, do uh, on Lake Kippewa and through the municipality of Kippewa, but we have concerns, we have concerns. Let's sit and talk about it. To this day, and we're in 2023, we're still at the same spot where we were back in 2012. Uh, we wrote a letter to the uh, Premier Minister Legault stating our concerns, saying we support the project, but we want to sit with the promoters as a municipality and sit together and draw up a committee that will work on the issues and concerns that are raised by the municipality of Kipua concerning the environment. We kept pushing that aspect forward that we want to have a, a, a committee, well-defined committee, struck between the promoters and the municipality of Kipua for anything that affects the waterways within the boundaries of the municipality of Kipua. That did not seem acceptable to them. And so over the last year or so, uh, the only people that we've been able to talk to was the MRC and the MRC uh, were taking the lead. And you know, we didn't hear anything from the First Nations because we had concerns because our First Nation brothers and sisters have always said to them, the um, and, Environment is number one. Just in, uh, in uh, I'm quoting the chief of Kibowek in an article that uh, in their local newspaper that uh, just recently came out last month that says that if there's any, any project, be it mining, any project that could have an effect on the environment we would not support it as a First Nation community. And the issues, the concerns that are being brought forward by not only the municipality of Kipwa, there was a communicate press that was brought up by a number of environmental groups. OBVT, Organisation Bassin Versant, brought out their concerns about the project. Créat Conseil Régional de Abitibité Miscamingue, they brought out concerns. Les Amis de la Rivière Kipawa brought our concerns. So Pimmican Park, I mean, the local group here for the protection of uh, Lac Ti, we all had concerns, but we all stated, because we had numerous discussions over, over the last couple of years, is that it can be a good project, but the environment's got to come first. And it seems that when we bring those topics forward, There's no answers. I think there was a public meeting in the town of Temiskaming, and I, I, I didn't attend because I told them, I said, 
uh, you just want to say you want to consult us, but you don't give us any answers. You, you want to know what our concerns are, but we don't get any answers from you. So I guess that's, that's the issue that I have with this project, is that they want to know what our concerns is. But if you tell me what your project is, I'll tell you what my concerns are, but uh, the project that you've put forward, I think it's about five or six pages, and it's a $200 million project that you're proposing to do, and, uh, and there's no plans, there's no plan de DV of what you're going to do, and uh, so when we ask those questions, you have difficulty answering us. So that's where we are right now. That's where the concern of the municipality of Kipo is at the present time. So as, as I was saying, over the years, you know, we've had discussions on and off with the promoters. Then, like I said lately, the, the promoters are not there. They've asked us to meet with this société that they formed, you know, a table of, of uh, stakeholders, and uh, that's not our role. Uh, we're, as, as a municipality, we're concerned with, with what is happening within our municipal, ba municipal boundaries. So last week, we... Uh, had a meeting with uh, a group uh, that has been doing some diving. I'll just use the term Gordon Creek. That's from the dam in Kipwa here to, to throughout the municipality. These, this it's, it's, a, it's a company, local company, uh, bought the Drav. They've been diving, pulling out old saw logs from the old logging days. So they've been filming and what they've seen underwater and bringing their concerns. So we met with them last week and they brought their concerns forward of what is under the waters in Gordon Creek. And I was there with my counselors and our, we also invited our legal team to be with us because we're planning our next steps of how can we become more involved as concerned citizens in what is happening within our municipal boundaries of the, of the next steps that we would uh, put forward to deal with the promoters of this project. And uh, so this group, Bois de Drave, and, uh, and Keith, one of our local uh, filmmakers, he was underwater to film what they found under the water. And if you look at, as any citizen or anybody drives by on the roads and they look, the water looks beautiful. But what is under there, what they showed us, what is under there, it's terrifying. And I'm not shy to use the word terrifying. What is floating in there? What is sitting on the bottom? The gas that potential that's coming up through there. So it really, really struck a nerve in our people, our counselors, and our legal counsel. Uh, if we increase the flow that are proposing by the Onamiki group, which is the First Nations and the MRC, through this Gordon Creek. I would be I don't know what the exact word I, I would use to to uh, to, uh, to uh, if nothing was done if this lake wasn't cleaned up before they increased that flow of water through there with their hydro development project to what would happen to our neighbors next door, like in the town of Timiskaming. The Raya Mill that builds there, that uses there, the clean water from Lake Kippewa to, for their products. The Ottawa River, Lake Timiskaming. What would be coming through here if that water, water flow was increased by six or seven times of the existing flow? 
that really made us sit back in our chairs at, at, at that meeting and say, whoa, something has to be done here. And that's why over the years I've never spoke publicly for or against the hydro development project. Uh, as a municipality, you said, well, we'll wait, maybe they'll start to share the information on just what the project is. 20 years later, we still have received nothing of, of what the project is going to be. Like, as I said before, it's a, uh, it's a document. This is it here. One Miki, a small hydro development, hydro project. It's a $200 million project 30 years ago, or 20 years ago. Today it could be 300 million. So this is what they present us, and they want us to consult and tell us if it's a good project or it's a bad project. And they ask us what our concerns are. I think if you just look what we what we have seen last week in our meeting with this group, if the promoters would be looking at something like that and listen to the environmental groups that are out there saying, maybe let's have a second look at this project. And I think that's what's needed now, is someone to, to uh, the promoters to be sitting with us not their little society that they've built up separately as chaired by uh, uh, some individuals that are from the MRC. And, uh, but we need to sit with the promoters. That's the two chiefs. Chief Lance Heyman and Chief Lisa Robinson and the representative of the MRC. Our focus mostly is the chiefs because our chiefs and as an Algonquin myself, the environment to me comes, is a priority. You know, we're complaining lately that, uh, that uh, the fishing is, is uh, not, as, not what it used to be in the old days. And uh, what those people from the DRAV that we met with last week, the, uh, the, the divers and the filmmaker, showed us what is under Gordon Creek. It's dead. Everything down there is dead. There's no vegetation. There's no fish. There's just a lot of contaminants. And I won't go into details because we have some experts that have, have looked at what is under the water there. And I think as if I was a promoter, I would be wanting to look at what these, uh, these uh, concerned groups are putting forward to us too. I think it's time for the promoters to say, whoa, and Let's sit down and look at the concerns that are that are that uh, the different groups have. Bonjour, je me présente, Stéphane Beaulé, porte-parole pour la compagnie Bois de Drave Incorporée. Nous sommes sur le site de, du lac T. Euh, ici, au lac T, tout ça, nous sommes en train de faire une grosse, un grosse développement et des recherches avec l'Université de Québec, euh, secteur Campus Amos, et aussi avec un groupe qui s'appelle le groupe Grema, euh, incluant aussi le Centre de recherche international euh, de les forêts froides alentour d'ici. Euh, Ici, notre but principal tout ça, au lac c'est de nettoyer le lac. 
quand on veut dire nettoyer le lac. Euh, présentement, ça, fait, ça va faire notre sixième année que nous sommes en train de recueillir les bio submergés euh, pour nous donner accès à des endroits sensibles, tout ça, pour la, la vie aquatique. Euh, la phase 2, tout ça, de ce projet ici, ça va être de nettoyer l'écorce et de vraiment remettre le lac T à un état naturel avant la drave euh, le plus possible.